Good morning, traders. Chris Buss here with Traders Profit Compass with your morning look at markets for Friday, January 15th. Okay, um, it's 7 o'clock as I'm starting the video. The major indexes are down about a half a percent across the board. I think the Dow is down about 100 points. That's what I heard uh, last. But the big banks have yet to report. Uh, those are going to be coming up here in the next, you know, hour or so. J.P. Morgan, Wells Fargo, uh, what's the other one? Citibank and PNC are scheduled today. Kind of strange that they fall on a Friday. Uh, it's been a while since they had a, you know, Friday reporting period. So we'll see how, you know, if that lifts the markets or or what the deal is, um, you know, heading into the open. Um, I do want to. Uh, make some opening remarks here before we get into the chart. Um, I was wrong yesterday. Um, I thought Biden was going to do an afternoon speech on the COVID relief package. Turned out to be after the bell. Uh, $1.9 trillion package, a little shy of the 2.2 that I thought he was going to uh, go for. He wants to top off the COVID relief checks uh, to people with another $1,400, bringing it up to 2000 uh, which is the number Trump said, you know, a couple weeks ago that never happened. So we'll see how the day plays out, obviously, but uh, there doesn't appear to be a moonshot based on based on his uh, package, at least so far. Also, today is January OPEX. Uh, options expire today for the January cycle. Please check your... Uh, holdings to make sure you don't have any forgotten positions so you don't get any surprise assignments tomorrow morning that you weren't expecting. Uh, and also, I want to remind you that we're closed on Monday for observance of Martin Luther King Day. And uh, the reason that's noteworthy is, if you'll recall, we did a video last last year um, featuring Peter Brandt, market wizard and technician. And he's a firm believer that the Friday close heading into a three-day weekend is very important. It uh, it speaks to risk appetite. You know, who wants to, you know, who wants to hold through a three-day weekend that, it, you know, isn't scared of the weekend risk, the added risk of an extra day? Uh, where might the weak hands be? etc. So we want to watch the uh, today a little more closely than we would just any normal Friday. One, we've got the OPEX, which may, you know, throw a monkey wrench into normal flows. If you've been a student of the OPEX week, you know, there get to be these call walls, you know, a, a, a strike on the on the board that has an inordinate amount of calls sitting in it and also put walls you know where where's the location where's the strike on the chain where there have been a lot of put buyers so when you've got these call walls and put walls it tends to trap the tends to trap price between them because there are a lot of forces at work that don't want those people to win so, for instance, if there's a call wall at 381 on SPY, here, that becomes a natural resistance level overhead. And by the same token, if there's a, you know, put wall down here at 368, I don't know where they are exactly, but they're out there. And so... Although there may be good news, there may be a lot of incentive for market makers and you know other market participants to prevent price from you know blowing through 381 and having all those call buyers get paid. So that's the way the market works. You know, where can we park this thing on a Friday so most people lose? I mean, it's it's cruel, but that's the way it is. Uh, you know, think about where could they park SPY today to make the most people 
guess about what's going to happen next week. So it's not so easy to take a position uh, based on what happens today. That's usually what they do, you know, heading into a, a longer weekend. So we'll have to see how that plays out. Also, I'm going to start including on the blog uh, posting each day a recap of the order flows that I see. Not only, you know, unusual uh, buying or selling of individual names, but also in aggregate. Uh, you'll see it if you visit the blog site today. You'll see I'll have a, a bearish recap and a bullish recap. Where was the most premium bought? Where was the most premium on the put side bought? And this just becomes an extra piece of the puzzle. So, for instance, if you saw that, wow, uh, a lot of call buying was done in Alibaba yesterday, for example. And then you go to the Alibaba chart and it looks really good. Then that would give you more confidence that you've got a productive chart pattern. Plus, you've got institutional order flow coming in behind it good chance it's going to go higher. Now, if you see institutional order flow in a chart that's crap, then you've got to be a little bit more careful. And usually I let the chart take precedence. That's my number one factor. You know, what does the chart look like? Is it is it breaking out? Is it in a downtrend, an uptrend, at support, at resistance, etc.? And then use the order flow to complement it. But I always think more information is better, especially, you know, as more and more people utilize the options, I think they're becoming more and a more important component of the analysis of where we want to, you know, focus our attention. So you'll see that. I also make a point today. In fact, the, the title that I chose for today's uh, video is Stock Pickers Market. In the past... It's been pretty easy. It doesn't seem easy in real time, but it's been pretty easy. You know, you you know, I'm long Fang. Okay, great. You're going to outperform the market. Uh, you know, I'm long tech. I'm long whatever in the sectors that have been working, and you can kind of camp out there for sometimes months and even years and outperform the market. I think that's changing now. I think we're seeing a lot of dispersion of the winners and the losers, even even amongst the individual sectors. I think going forward, we're gonna have to watch. I mean, I'm not this isn't something to trade on. It's just my view of the market. We've got to go to individual stocks and charts to to find out what to trade. But it may be a tough environment for companies with sky high multiples you know, PEs of, you know, 5,000 or even if, or money losing stocks that are, you know, trading at ultra high levels. This may be a tough environment for them. And the flip side of that is what are the cyclical and value names that are, you know, racing to the upside and try and catch those. So I think it's going to put a premium on picking stocks being in the right stocks at the right time. And I think there's a lot more dispersion now. And I think the people that are just, you know, in passive flows, you know, your IRA money goes to Fidelity or, or Vanguard or something and it just goes in and it buys Apple and it buys, you know, the, the top stocks. They may have a tougher time this year. Uh, yesterday, for example, all the, all the FANG names were down while IWM races up 2%. That's a huge difference and something we haven't seen in a long, long time. So let's uh, be on our toes and start looking in places that we haven't been accustomed to looking for uh, lately. And uh, let's find some gems and get on board these moves as they happen. So let's go through the charts quickly. SPY 2-hour. Um... Touch of 381, rejected, back down to the bottom of the box. This is not, you know, particularly exciting trading, but it becomes a little more exciting if you 
buy at support and sell at resistance. So on uh, uh, Wednesday, could have bought at 378 and, and made $3 out of it and then shorted at the top of the box and made $3 on the way down. I mean, that's range bound trading. Now today, we're going to open down around 376. So there'll be a gap above to 378 and a gap below to 374. So this open is going to be really critical today. You know, do they flash higher to fill the gap and then, you know, come down? Or do they take it down first into this gap and then leave a gap above? We'll have to see. Yesterday also we were looking at the uh, PPO indicator that was starting to curl up and we, you know, put a green box around it saying, you know, that would be really bullish if this cross, high level bull cross, well, it turned down. So now it looks like with the down open, you know, there's a good chance that we at least roll over to 374 today. Um, they may keep it between 378 and 376 or even take it back up. But the levels couldn't be more clear. 381, 378, 376, and 374. They're even. They're all even. There are not even any fractions in there. So key off these levels and then trust them. If you get a break below, you can get short for um, a quick $2. Uh, here's the 30 minute chart. We had this trend line penciled in yesterday. Tried to make that move into the gap, got rejected, fell below the trend line, gave you an opportunity to get short and you got, uh, uh, you got about three bucks out of it. So right down here to 378. Notice here, PPO rolled over, RSI fell below 50. Those are both bearish developments. So now it's all about holding 378 or 376 this morning uh, at the top of the gap with a $2 gap to fill. Q's were soggy all day. Came up here, touched the top of the gap and got rejected. Perfect place to try an objective short with the idea that, you know, if you got stopped out, you could flip long for the gap fill. So that was definitely an objective location at uh, 317.20. Now today, we're going to, uh, uh, the last time I looked, we were down in the 313, 312.50 area. We've got a level here at 312, and then we've got a gap at 310. So keep those levels in mind. If we enter or open low here, come back up and recapture 314, then that's your buy. You know, recapturing an, uh, a predefined level from below is bullish. So if they, you know, open it lower, come back up and fill the gap and keep going, you can make an objective buy at 314. Here's just the uh, exploded look. And the nice thing about uh, these last few moves, there haven't been a lot of whipsaw shakeout candles that would really scare you. I mean, you know, once this turned from the bottom, it was more or less a unidirectional ride up to the top. And then once it got rejected, you know, pretty much a fade the whole day. So you don't know when they're going to come. You don't know if that's going to happen when you take your position. But once you're in and then you get that fade the whole day, you're not on the edge of your seat all day and there there weren't a lot of candles that would you know scare you out of your position which is always nice iwm remains the star up two percent while spy and qqq were down uh i don't have it in here but a little gap up and gap and go up to the top of this channel now this morning it's down a little bit you know half a percent or so i think the key on any down move here is for it to hold 210 where this uh, bottom of this channel line comes in. If you lose 210, 
I think then you have a, a pretty decent chance at a short down to uh, lower levels. Let's look on a 30 minute chart. Um, you know, here's the gap right here at 210. If that fills and then this level breaks, then I think you got to run to 208. And then if 208, 208 fails, you know, on down. But IWM has been really strong. So I wouldn't be surprised, you know, if there was a pullback to 211. I mean, that's three bucks. And then a bounce here at the top of the gap. That would be my my uh, preferred scenario for today. You know, if they bring it down here, I think it holds the first time, maybe get a bounce. And then if they sell it off, come back and then fill it on the second try. But I still think you got to be looking for long entries on IWM. There's just not enough evidence here um, to go, you know, gonzo short. You can do a tactical trade being short. I mean, that's your sell signal right here on the break of this trend. And you do have bearish divergences in place. So, I mean, you can get short here against 214 and see if you get a flash down to 211. All I'm saying is be prepared to cover at, at support and take your profits and see if you get that bounce there. And if you don't, you reinitiate and look for lower prices. Facebook, wow. I was talking in the trading room. This is a daily chart we've been watching. I thought they were going to really try and hold this 200 up until earnings, but didn't happen. Um, they tried a, a, um, a, a little bit of a reach up here to 255 but then they rolled it over, sitting right on top of this uh, $10 gap. Now it really looks like, you know, Facebook's in trouble. They may sell it down into earnings on the 27th. So we've got, what do we got? 12 calendar days till they report. So we got all next week to trade this. And I wouldn't be afraid to get short against two, 245 I mean, if it breaks down into this gap, get short and try and get a $10 move out of it. There is a large volume over price bar here that should act as good support. But if the ball starts rolling downhill and maybe if the market is soft next week coming out of OPEX, it may come all the way down here to 221. I don't want to you know, presuppose or pre-imagine where it's going. Let's let price be the guide. But if it loses 245, that's your objective short with a stop just below, uh, just above 245, and then see if you can get that uh, gap fill down to 235. That would be a nice trade. Uh, Apple was soggy all day. Uh, I was in this one, a little disappointed, didn't do more. But now, you know, uh, 128.5 sets up as an important level. If it loses 128.5, then probably down here to 126.25. Uh, couldn't get past 131. Put in another bear cross right at the zero line on PPO, which is bearish. So uh, mega cap tech has been soft, except for Tesla. Uh, it remains near the top of the range. Uh, it was not able to fill this gap. So the posture of it says down here to the top of this uh, trend line. And then that would be an important spot for Tesla to hold right here at 825. And if it were to lose 825, then you're down quickly uh, to this gap. So uh, if price comes up, and takes out 855, you can get long there and see if you get a gap fill up to 880. Microsoft, this was a, a really nice technical study that I want to point out a few of the nuances. And I hope you got it, hope you got part of it. But 
one of the first candles of the day. I got the, I got my cursor right on it. It's a it's a pin bar. It's hardly anything there, but it happened. A reach up to perfectly tag the top of the box at 217.50. And it, you know, just one touch, one second, one print right at 217 and then it was quickly rejected. That is a a textbook back touch, right? Back touch of resistance, and then it fell away, and it was straight down the whole day. And I don't want to say it was impossible to grab it here at 217, but that would have been your cue. That would have been your cue, especially when you got the next candle down to get short because you had some very objective levels that you could shoot against right here at the prior day high. You could have put on a pretty tight short right here and it turned out to play out perfectly. And at the end of the day, I thought they were going to try and hold it right here at the top of the gap, but it let go. So now this morning, uh, this uh, 212 level becomes really important for them to hold because if they lose 212, then it's coming down to 209. So watch how price reacts within this gap. You know, maybe they save it. And if they recapture 214, you can buy. But I think they go ahead today and at least come down uh, to fill this gap and then see if they bounce it or if they fade it further. Very weak technical posture RSI trapped below 50 and uh, another bear cross at lower levels below the zero line <clears throat> that's a surefire sign of a very weak stock Amazon just continued on its way down uh, losing this 3156 was a sell Q losing 3150 was a point to sell and then it held the line here at 3130 so today 3130 is your pivot a break below I think you go to 3100 and possibly lower a hold here you can be long against that and uh, uh, another buy point would be on a recapture 3150 this gap has obviously been filled so I will, you know, take that off the board. But again, a weak stock. You've got a PPO rollover right at the zero line. And usually those follow through the downside. And RSI has a uh, bearish posture as well. Google, very much the same idea. There was a reach up candle to 1755 at the open. Rejected, well-defined level. And then it just went down the whole way. Uh, back to the low of, uh, what was that, Wednesday, here at 1730. So 1730 is your pivot. Above is okay if you're bullish. And look for a move back to 1755. Uh, a break below 1730, you're going to come down here to 715, possibly 7, 1700, where there's that big $50 gap below. So... Uh, that's that and uh, Netflix wasn't a big move but it was a bearish move um, I don't know if this reach up was uh, yesterday morning or at the close yesterday I'm not sure but the break of 506 was a sell the break of 500 uh, actually didn't break it held right at 500 so 500 your pivot today and uh, below looks like a, a pretty interesting place to get short because you could get a a, um, a six dollar move down to 494 and even possibly this 487 which was the prior low and then there's a support level 
at 477. So we're just going to have to see how today plays out. But I can tell you this, that that the, I'll call them market leading fang names, you know, the fat man names that have been so bullish for so long, they look really soggy. And, you know, what I pointed out, you know, in a stock picker's market, that's a ripe environment for a long short book. What I mean by that is normally in a long short book, you've got your longs, you know, say the market is bullish, you've got your longs, and then you sprinkle in a couple shorts that can act as ballast points or hedges against your long book. But in this environment, I think there's going to be good opportunities to have both long and short positions work at the same time. For instance, if they roll out of Fang, you know, start selling off Apple and Facebook and, you know, Amazon and all that, and roll that money into cyclical value, you could have the QQQs, you know, going down while at the same time, You've got cyclical value names, small caps, ripping. So if you can get that dynamic working, I mean, you're going to be golden. I mean, that's what I want to try and do. Um, especially if I see, um, you know, some of these high flyers really roll over. There's a lot of air under a lot of these stocks. And... You know, the, the, the environment that we've been in have been keeping them up. But that tide can turn in a heartbeat. And it would be sweet to capture, you know, a couple positions in some of these uh, names that, you know, the market turns on. And also capture the up cycle in cyclical value and commodities uh, the commodities names and uh, uh, get that long short book working at the same time and uh, that there's no better feeling than that I mean when you're a trader I've had it happen a few times not a lot but a few times when you know all your long stuff is working and your short stuff is working on the same day when you got you know the indexes are red but all your stuff is green. I mean, it's awesome. So we can we can only hope that we can get that going. But uh, I think it's going to be a tougher environment for people who are more passive, uh, you know, hands-off investors, just, you know, putting their money into Fidelity and letting Fidelity, um, you know, buy the index. That might be a tougher environment this year. Okay. Um, Big Friday. I uh, hope you've been doing well this week. Uh, there's definitely been a few opportunities out there. Hope you've uh, captured your fair share. Let's wrap up the week really strong with some sharp objective trades and think very carefully about what you've got with the three-day weekend ahead and option expiration at 4 p.m. Uh, if you're new to the channel and you like what you've heard, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, join the team. I'll do my best to keep you informed of where the market's moving, what I see, and where opportunities are. Hit the alarm bell and you'll get that notice every time I publish content, as well as look over in the show notes where there are links to the blog site. You can look at the, uh, the uh, option information I have posted, and also uh, there's a trade idea or two there this morning that you can take a look at. And uh, if you register for all my content, then you'll get that all in an email each and every day, uh, morning, midday, whenever I publish, you'll get an email there. You won't miss a beat. And you'll also get an invite to our trading room. And we'd love to have you. Uh, it's been a pleasure since the new year. A lot of new faces, a lot of good ideas, a lot of camaraderie and uh, teamwork. I mean, there's so much going on. It is so nice, you know, to have somebody post you know, a ticker that's running that you would have never seen in a million years that can focus your attention even for 15 seconds 
to, hey, do I want to, you know, do I want to jump on that train for a quick trade? And, and there's been some dramatic moves lately. Um, so that stuff is surely welcomed. If you're, you know, if you're at your desk uh, and able to take those kind of trades. But even if you're a swing trader on the daily time frame and have a full-time job, check it out at night. You can flip through, you know, a day's worth of posts in a half an hour, take yourself some notes, and uh, be pointed to some very nice trading opportunities, uh, ones you probably wouldn't be made aware of, you know, having not done that. So anyhow, uh, the trading room can be a great resource for you. So until we talk again, this has been Chris Buss with Traders Profit Compass. Have a good trading day and talk to you soon.